Let's explore the relationship between the consumption function and the savings function further. We said the consumption function, C, equals autonomous C plus induced C. Now, if this is the consumption function, then the saving function, we said, is minus autonomous C plus 1 minus C Y. If we put numbers to this, as in our example, when we discussed the consumption function, we said autonomous consumption equals 100, and we said the mass of propensity to consume is 0.8 Y. Then, if this is the consumption function, the savings function would be minus 100 plus now 1 minus C, in other words, 1 minus 0.8 equals 0.2 Y. We can also show the consumption function and the savings function graphically. On a diagram, the consumption function showing the re relationship between consumption and income. Autonomous C equals 100. That's the intercept on the vertical axis is 100. And then if there's an increase in income, consumption will increase. And the slope of this is given by the mass of propensity to consume. In other words, if income increased by 1, consumption will increase by 0, 0,8. Let's do the same for the savings function. Now, the savings function, as we can see, it has a negative value. Autonomous C minus autonomous C minus 100. In other words, the diagram looks a bit different. This is 0. In other words, if we want to find autonomous savings equals minus 100, minus 100, then if there's an increase in income, we're going to save. So if income increase, we're going to save, and this is our savings function. Sorry, I forgot about the, the income there. And the slope of the savings function, if there's an increase of one rand in income, Savings will increase by 0, 0,2. So, as we can see, the consumption function, slope 0, 0,8, given by the mass of propensity to consume, and the savings function is just the mirror of that, where the slope of the savings function equals 0, 0,2.